This is Cadillac Unscripted on 107.9 CDY. I am Rich Spicer. My co-host is Katie Huckle. And back at the guest microphone is Mary Galvanic, that um, I don't want to call freak of nature. Human dynamo? <laughs> human dynamo. That's better. Okay. Hey, I'll take them both. <laughs> okay. So we're here to talk about forest and farm, both as, as well as um, the Cadillac Farmer's Market, which is only a few weeks away from opening. Oh, it so sure hard is. To believe. So Thank exciting. you so much for having me, guys. I'm oh, really excited to be here. What's on deck first with the farmer's market? We want to hear about it because it's such a fun thing to do all summer. Well, I know that everyone has seen, uh, whether it's on the news or newspaper, uh, that the market was going to lose some of its space. I would like to first and foremost say thank you to the community. Thank you to all of our supporters. Thank you to our amazing vendors who really did make their voices heard um, at city council meeting as well as in their emails and voicemails. And we have gotten our space back. So your Cadillac Farmer's Market is going to continue status quo, same as last year. Um, We're just making sure that the handicapped folks have a couple extra spots this year, which is a wonderful idea. Oh, 100%. Everybody wants to come to the Farmer's Market. Tell us about, oh, you've got a story hour and you've got new vendors and you've got food trucks. Give us the details. Yes, the Cadillac Farmer's Market opens on June 13th, and it operates every Tuesday and Friday from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. So we are bringing food trucks, um, Cornerstone Coffee Truck, uh, Chico's Truck, and uh, we are also having uh, Betty's Little Brats this year. We will have on-the-spot uh, kettle corn and some fresh squeezed lemonade throughout the year. Mm. We've got uh, amazing children's activities with Kate King from 4-H. Uh-huh. And a few other local uh, children's programs will be joining us. We also have... Um, a children's story time that we're setting up for Tuesdays, and that's just a wonderful little midweek uh, event that you can bring your kids out to get your produce and enjoy uh, story time with your kids, a little free activity to get out in the public. Tell, tell moms and dads what the stories are going to be about. I love this part. Well, our stories will always be agriculture based. So I hope to also have a little gift like we've done in the past to send home, whether that's a packet of seeds that we were donated from 4-H also, um, or just a little bit of soil to learn about soil composition or um, some banana peels to go home and make your own uh, banana peel water to put that potassium into your plants. Um, And so just a little bit of of agriculture-based activity or a story at every market this year. Can you tell us what food trucks are going to be there? Yes, we are going to have three amazing food trucks, and as they need a day off, we'll fill that in with um, some other local trucks. But our main trucks this year will be Cornerstone Coffee and then Chico's Taco Truck and also Betty's Little Brats. They will be using uh, locally sourced ingredients as much as possible, so you can bet that you can get a great salad from one of those trucks or maybe a wrap or a smoothie uh as soon as the food does come in after this late spring they will be including our farmers food in what they do you know that that's a gift that you have mary is is collaboration with people where does it come from I have always said that we are better together, just as a statement, and to live out of love and lead with compassion. So those are the two things that we live by at Forest and Farm, as well as within the Cadillac Farmers Market community. And I really, truly believe that through the pandemic and just in the modern way of living, we're kind of all island people, I say, uh, more than we used to be. So I like to bring people back together and show them that it's a great place to meet people. Uh, Then next time you are out at the store or out at another event, you you have those familiar faces around you. And and that's really one of the biggest benefits of community is to feel like you're part of something Mm -hmm. um, that can save lives. It's interesting that you bring that up, Mary, because this is year three of you leading this, right? Yes. Uh, So your first year was 2021 when we were just starting to emerge from COVID. Yeah. And we couldn't be together. Right. So um, have you found that as we we put that further and further in the rearview mirror that people are more willing to get out and be seen and, 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 and just be a part of things again? 
Yes, I've always called our market a handshake and hug type of market. <laughs> I do not. I, um, I don't do a lot of paperwork. There's not big contracts. You don't have to promise me that you're going to come every single day of the year. Um, it's very relaxed. And that keeps our vendors rotating a little bit. Um, it keeps something new for the public to see every time they come to market. But I will tell you that very first year I was managing the market before we took over um, the ownership of it, there was not a lot of handshaking or hugging going on down right. there post-COVID. Now you go down there and everyone's got their arms around each other. They're sharing pastries and cookies. And um, it's a, a welcoming hug every morning when you come to say hello to me and, and get your spot figured out. Um, and people are just happy to have that warm and fuzzy feel back to our, our market for sure. Right. Let's talk about educating children and, and sort of your passion um, for, for a health, healthy living for kids. Can you tell us about your project? Forest and Farm is uh, definitely a project of ours. It is a fully operational farm where we also hold educational summer camps and a school year program. Um, the children get to be hands-on on the farm. They can come on a volunteer basis. They can come as part of one of our programs, and um, they are always hands on in whatever they love most. So we call our, our program child-led program as well. Um, my children have decided that they really enjoy uh, raising animals and being a part of 4-H. So from Mangalitsa hogs, uh, which will have piglets soon, to our Nigerian dwarf goats, which will have babies as well very soon, to the 150 chicks that we're hatching this week, uh, to the ducks, chickens, guinea fowl, peacocks, turkeys, rabbits, you name it, the kids have full control over what they want to explore. Um, and we raise all of our own proteins. And what I see here is that the children have a place to learn while moving. So they can run through the forest and learn about the trees. They can help with the chores and learn about the animals. And when there's movement in education, I feel like it just sticks a little a little more. Mm -hmm. um, we get to express ourselves freely with a child-led environment. And it's really helping quite a few kids have a successful educational experience and it's yeah. been amazing and it doesn't include this yes and, yes. Those, and because we do not have a webcam in here i will <laughs> tell everyone that i am holding up my telephone which i desperately want to get my kids off of sometimes we all do and i will tell you i have never been around better behaved children than the children you bring into this studio well Three they're real times. tired <laughs> I They're mean, pretty tired after playing on the farm all day. And that I mean, right there helps a lot. Right. And they sleep better, Mary. They do. They We do not have a problem sleeping in our family. We all just kind of dinner and then we're out. Okay. so, so. Let, and, and didn't you say that lunch, in many cases, you make the lunch, but the lunch comes from the food that the kids have raised? And yes. We uh, have butchered our own turkeys, ducks, guinea fowls, rabbits, chickens, and hogs. So we've got freezers full of our own proteins. Uh, we also grow... Right now, it's about an acre and a half of gardens this year. Uh, we did get a grant from the NRCS to put up a giant hoop house. Awesome. So that's about three quarters of the way planted out. We're uh, working on that this week. And then if we can't source it from our farm, then we will uh, find another local farm. Okay. to source uh, that food from. So our raw milk comes from Baker Green Acre, uh, and we get cheeses from Maple Leaf Farm, and we're just very lucky. My little brother grows the cattle, so we get a whole cow once or twice a year to add to the freezers. Uh, we really don't buy much at the grocery store. We're still currently eating canned and dehydrated food from our last year's garden, and um, we create all of our own teas and we dry our herbs um you name it the kids are loving it down to uh growing their own garlic and today we planted uh pine berry strawberries which are the full white strawberries Ooh. so it gets really fun they get to pick what they do um always if they get to pick what they do plant it and harvest it 
I do not have any problem getting them to eat it. So uh, I've never seen kids more excited to try a guinea fowl from the roaster or uh, have their Thanksgiving turkey or make their tacos out of their own pulled pork. Um, this is something that they pride themselves on and they get to take it home to their families too. I mean, Mary, do you know how many times I've had kids around that won't eat vegetables? That, that's just unheard of in your world. Honestly, yeah. I don't have any problem with it because now 95% of the kids on the farm are eating their fresh veggies and making it look so good that anyone who is new to our program and maybe a little bit unsure has this wonderful group of kids saying, oh, they taste better than the ones in the store because they do. Uh, sweet carrot pulled straight out of the ground tastes a hundred times better than a baby carrot from a bag. So once they realize those peas, when you just pull them off the plant, taste almost like candy, mm -hmm. uh, they are excited and wanting to take some home to share with their families. What would you say to parents that are thinking their kids might need something different um, and, and might need a different educational experience? Would you tell them, come on out and see your operation? For sure. Okay. We are always inviting people out to, whether that's take a tour, interview, be a part of our summer camp, work with us on a volunteer basis to kind of learn how to do their own gardening or animal husbandry on their own property. And we are very excited to uh, show people around. We also have the um, homeschool group coming out the day before we end our school year. So I believe that's May 25th we were talking about doing that. We've had Great Start Collaborative out. Um, and so we're welcoming field trips as well from local schools. And there's just so much to see and do on the farm now. It's really kind of built itself up that it's a full day experience. That's incredible. Can you tell us specifically what the camps are? Are and what the kids will do at the camps? Our summer camp this year, okay. uh, we have four weeks. We usually have eight, uh, but we are expecting a baby, so we send it down a little bit. <laughs> Congratulations, <to four>. yes. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we have gardening week, animal week, soil week, and pollinator week this year. So <laughs> it's a loosely based educational week uh, where if you love pollinators, but maybe you love seeing the butterflies hatch. Maybe you love watching the bees. Um, maybe you want to learn about flies and how they're pollinators, because that's icky and gross and fun to learn about <laughs> as kids. Um, whatever you like to learn about self-pollinating with a paintbrush is also a really good one. Uh, so yeah, they get to kind of choose which thing they like to learn about the most, and we go from there. Oh, my goodness. Have you had students graduate, let's say, from your program? And, you know, can, can you track them? How are they doing, the kids that have gone through the system with you? Yeah, well, okay. we are only a couple of years in. Okay. So we haven't had many graduations. We've seen a couple of children join us for the preschool program. Okay. And then they go off to kindergarten or first grade at another school. Um, they're doing great. I mean, the kids are kids are awesome. Mm -hmm. really, and all of their differences and similarities that they have together. Um, it's all about building friendships. So when you have a confidence and you know your community is standing behind you and you know you've got people in your corner, uh, you can do anything. And that's really what I see in the kids at Forest and Farm, a very tight-knit crew. Wonderful. They're going to be friends forever. I think so, yeah. Give me a little background, if you would, Mary, about, um, you know, your, your, your Cadillac area born and raised, and, and, and it's been around and around and around the way to get back here. Mm -hmm. Thank where, goodness. Where, where were you all those years that you were away? Yeah, I was born and raised out in Hoxieville on a beef cattle farm. I always say I've been working since I've been walking, and um, that's definitely true. I love a good hard day's work. Uh, it makes me feel like I've accomplished something, and I'm, I just feel good. It's bedtime is easier, like we mentioned before. Uh, but I did uh, travel to Atlanta. I helped with some local agriculture distribution and local farms down there, as well as a few other things, learning marketing and advertising for local businesses and business startup uh, for Fox Brothers Barbecue and Morelli's Gelato down in Atlanta. 
And then uh, off to Denver I went. And in Denver, I ran a forest school program, a uh, nature school program in the foothills of the mountain in Golden. Mm-hmm. And that was a lot of fun. Uh, we were outside, definitely uh, on a farm sometimes, but I didn't own and operate a farm. I managed a Golden Acre farm out there. So I learned a lot about how to grow uh, fields of produce. And mm-hmm. I learned a lot about um, just the foothills of the mountains, the mountains themselves, exploring, uh, exploring with children. And that was really fun. And I, I was able to learn how important it is for kids to be outside and learning in nature. Um, that was very obvious to me. So that was really a lot of fun. Now I feel like I get to come back here and kind of rebuild the village that I grew up with. When I grew up, we were sourcing our beef from one family member, our vegetables from another. Grandma knew where that awesome wild blueberry patch was and was out there picking and sharing. And I did not see a lot of that Mm -hmm. going on upon moving back. And so that's kind of one of the things that I know we're going to have to do this in a modern way. But I would like to bring uh, local food to every local table and get people to realize that farmers are heroes. They're some of the coolest people you're ever going to meet. Hardworking, um, down to earth, uh, just really amazing people to chat with, but also the food that they can offer you is so much more nutritious than what you can purchase at the store. Um, your body will say thank you. Your brain will say thank you. Your the farmers health. will say thank you. Mm-hmm. Yes, and your local economy, mm-hmm. for sure. It, it's incredible how you're tying it all together. And it nothing makes me happier than when talent returns to Cadillac, Rich. Yeah, absolutely. You, you know, I mean, you can recruit all you want, um, but what a gift it is when and all of a sudden you wake up and Mary Galvanix moved back to town. Well, speaking of which, Mary, when you were a high school senior, were you a I have to get the heck out of town and live my life kind of person or... Uh, what was that your your thought? I've, I I got to go out and live a little bit and get beyond the uh, the, the 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 four walls of the definitely. small town. Yeah, I definitely wanted to go south. I've always loved the south. I love the community of the south. I love the food. I love the heat. Um, I'm more of a lizard type of a, on a rock type of person, <laughs> not so much an Eskimo, uh, in, you know, in the uh-huh. Arctic. It, it, so. so, so even though you are, you are several months pregnant, you're closer to delivery than you are the, the beginning. Um, you would prefer 90 to 20. Yes. As, yeah. a, really? as, a, as a pregnant woman, you're saying that I, I, I have a hard time believing. That. Incredible. Yes. I, I think we're <laughs> eight months along now. Um, okay. I, I will say that I do prefer the heat. I'm in my greenhouse. So even on a day like today, it's pretty warm in my greenhouse. It's warm in your office right now. Mm-hmm. And I just love it. I yeah. would rather be warm than cold. Okay. So I'm a, definitely a summer gal. And then in the winter, I watch a lot of movies and bake a lot of muffins. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I want to I want to bake muffins and watch movies, Rich. That sounds wonderful. Okay. Well, we know you bake cakes. That's right. I don't know how big you are on movies, but Yeah, I well not good not I can't sit still. Okay. See, but I'd like to be able to. Okay. Mm-hmm. And you're not going to be able to sit still either because you're going to have a little one running all over the place. Yes, we definitely have our hands full this summer and we are so excited to welcome baby Thea to the Forest and Farm community as well as the Farmers Market community. Everyone is so helpful. Great. My team is stepping up. Oh, great. Um, just this morning alone, I said, I I absolutely have to have a nap today. <laughs> I cannot keep my eyes open. So a mm-hmm. uh, two-hour nap and everybody comes together. Um, mm-hmm. Even when we have our giant four or 500-pound hog uh, <laughs> getting very close to having her babies, they're out there handling that it's just so... I can take a rest. And it's been amazing from my business partner, Emily Rupert. Also, my mom is a business partner in the market. Um, my husband, Alan, everyone, our community, the parents of the program, um, everyone has been so helpful. What are you looking forward to most about 2023 at the farmer's market? At the farmer's market, I'm looking forward to seeing everyone's faces again. They're smiling faces. They're um, stories of the winter and I learned so much from the farmers down there mm-hmm. as I am somewhat of a, a new farmer even though I'm approaching 40 we're kind of just starting this um, journey and 
they are always so helpful, full of knowledge. I call them our kings and queens of the market. They are the farmers that have been running the Cadillac Farmers Market for 40 years, are some of the most kind and helpful people I have ever met. And they deserve our support uh, just as much as anyone, if not more, uh, down there at the market as they're headed towards retirement. And you know how hard it is to save for retirement. Mm -hmm. Uh, Imagine being a farmer and a small business owner trying to do that. So every dollar that you spend down at our market, whether you're using your Senior Fresh, Project Fresh, or your EBT card, pay in cash, Venmo. Um, We have a lot of different ways to take payment down there. Uh, It doesn't matter how you spend, you're definitely helping uh, your local farms. Awesome. You know, Rich, I like to approach a farmer if they've got a unique vegetable, for example, eggplant, kohlrabi, stuff like that. And I will say, how, how would I prepare this? Can you give me an idea of, and they always have recipes. I mean, they're not going to give you a quarter cup of this and a teaspoon of this, but they'll give you a, a concept to follow. And, and you can introduce new vegetables and food items to your family that way. Because no That's one knows right. how to prepare it better than a farmer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they are so full of knowledge. It's mm-hmm. amazing. Uh, the variety of fruits and vegetables that you'll see down there this year will be more profound than any uh, past year. We've got a lot of new farmers joining us. Um, We are very lucky for that. We've got cheese coming down to the farmer's market, um, a bunch of variety of meats. You'll see our farmers advertising uh, that their farm also sells laying hens or baby chicks or ducklings. um, And those types of things can be advertised. We obviously aren't selling any animals down at the market, but um, you'll just see kind of the plethora of things that you can find at your local farms. And so that takes people from the market right on to these local farms uh, and, and utilizing them at their location as well, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. Uh, Several of our farms have roadside stands uh, Forest and Farm will be putting up our roadside stand this year on the corner of M55 and Sealy Road. So I know there's a lot of people who would like the market to go into the evening, and we are striving for that in the coming years. But until then, I would love to have a map for everyone, just uh, showing where those roadside stands are. Mm-hmm. And they are open seven days a week usually. So you can source a lot of things from your roadside stand. This year... <clears throat> Our market will also have a plant sale on May 20th. So it's another way to make sure that that startup of the year can be really costly on our farmers. Um, We put out a lot of money getting the farm started before we get $1 back in. Oh, sure. I hadn't thought of that. Sure. So in order to kind of ease some of those costs, we've decided to go ahead and start a plant sale once or twice a year. And this year will be on May 20th from 10 to 2, right down at the marketplace. It sounds like we'll have somewhere between 10 and 20 farmers there selling their seedlings. And it doesn't get more local than that. I mean, that's just an amazing resource for our community. Oh, it, there's nothing more fun, Mary. I'm not a big vegetable farmer, but there's nothing more fun and fresh than walking out on my patio and picking a pepper and a tomato for my salsa. Something you grew yourself. Oh, it, it it's, tastes it's, better. It's, yeah. I'm telling you, it does. Um, your, your students are going to have a greater appreciation of food and its origin, aren't they? They really do. They also know the amount of work that goes into it. So begging them to finish the last bits of their food isn't something that we have to do anymore. Uh, We want to finish our food. And then we want seconds and then we want thirds. (laughs) Because, well, I raised that bird or Uh I picked those carrots. And um, it's just it tastes so good. I mean, that farm fresh. If you've ever been to a farm to table restaurant and you yes. said, wow, the flavor in this food is profound. I mean, that's what it tastes like when you harvest it yourself. And even more so because at our lunch table, sometimes things were just harvested two, three, four minutes ago. Mm-hmm. And so that flavor is just right there. Um, and so, yeah. It's been amazing. We do a charcuterie a lot. So Ooh. it's just things that we pick and things that we have. We have dehydrated tomato chips. The kids love those with curry salt. And so you put a little bit of those on there. Um, they're eating basil leaves crumpled up on cream cheese with crackers from the garden last year. 
Uh, it's just amazing. And the more that they can be involved in it, the more science experiment it kind of gets. Mm-hmm. But um, the more they, the more they eat. So I don't think she sleeps. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It doesn't sound like it, but I know you do. I do. I fall right over. Uh, my husband <laughs> takes the evening shifts. I go to bed early. I wake up early. Oh, you're right. My husband's more of the night owl, and okay. he'll stay up with the kids if if need be, or finish up those dishes and get the house ready for the school program tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Uh, My business partner, Emily Rupert, comes at like seven in the morning to help everything get started. I have not been getting up and I'm not quite ready at 7 a.m. at eight months pregnant, but pretty close after that. (laughs) Um, So I've got this really great cushion around me. And everybody knows that I work as hard as I can, but they're right there to help me whenever I need it. It's amazing. What I like most, really, Mary, about the farmer's market, and really any farmer's market, is that it evolves through the, through, through the year, through the season. It's going to be different right. in, in August than it will be in July, and it's going to be different in July than it will be in June, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, and every year is different as well. Mm-hmm. And I think a big responsibility of ours is that public education piece of teaching um, – You know, the food cycle uh, that happens here throughout the year, uh, what a late spring means to our crops, uh, what an early spring means, or even what an early frost can mean to our crops. And so that's something that we are uh, definitely talking about a lot at the market. This is, of course, a late spring. Uh, You will see a lot of spring veggies hitting the marketplace, a lot of plants hitting the marketplace those first few weeks. A ton of amazing local bakeries will be with us. Oh, boy. Maybe even one and a half to two times as many as last year. Baked goods, we couldn't keep them on the shelves. They were just (laughs) flying off the shelves, and they'd be sold out by the end of the day. Uh So if you came towards the end of the market you would have slim pickings in the baked goods department. Okay. Um, we're hoping to kind of keep that rolling. Cupcake Mafia is going to be bringing their <laughs> uh, cupcake truck out. Oh, how fun. And um, we have so many new bakers, um, from dog treats to human treats. Mm-hmm. We have it all down there. Mm-hmm. And, of course, the cheeses, the meats, the milks, Fenner Farms bringing back beef again. Um, so it, even if the produce isn't there yet because of our late spring, you are going to be able to fill your fridge and to uh, put local food on your table at every meal starting at our first market. Oh, that is wonderful. And, you know, at Chico's is such a cool story, too. So um, I believe Chico sold to his daughter and son-in-law. And when COVID went, you know, came and kind of ravaged uh, the country, um, there was a career move. So they they bought it, but they weren't living locally. And they decided when all that went down, we're moving to Cadillac and we're going to run that restaurant full time. And all of a sudden, boom, there's a back back patio and there's a taco truck and there's a Lent menu with fish. Um, I mean, he, he has taken Chico's to the next level. And it's so fun to see that generational handoff. It's always been um, kind of a community anchor, a place that we all like to go and, and eat. But now it's turned in, it's it's really gone to the, to the next level, like I say. And one of the favorite graduation parties in this town is when Chico's rolls in with their burritos and their tacos, and that's at yes. the graduation party. It's like, yay, we don't have to have, you know, another root beer float. We're another having hot dog. Yeah. <laughs> well, another hot dog. <laughs> and, and the nice part about, you know, having the trucks down there is you can encourage folks who are working downtown to maybe take their lunch break at your, uh, at the market where there is going sure. to be better selection at 11.30 or noon than there might be at 2 or 2.30. Yes, and that is part of the synergy of it all is that uh, we are attracting those lunch goers in the downtown area. There's a lot of people working behind desks in that area. The DEQ building behind us. Right next door. City yep. Council's only two blocks away. We would love to see them down there yep. eating their lunch and shopping with us on their lunch break. Absolutely. Um, to everybody on the downtown strip. And uh, we do a really want to see that lunch crowd for sure you know i actually was a waitress for chico and joanne when i was about 16 years old (laughs) this doesn't surprise me (laughs) nothing would about you mary (laughs) i I was it was a great place chico and joanne hold a special place in my heart and so does chico's i i grew up going there and eating the fried cauliflower and the rice and chicken dish with my grandma and um yeah we are so happy to have them with us 
I just think that this this year at the market is going to be even more amazing than the last two. And we are going to continue to do that year after year. Perfect time for you to tell us what the days are and when it will be open. The Cadillac Farmers Market will have a plant sale May 20th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. You know you need to get those plants in by around June 1st, so it's the perfect time to come down and get your plants. We also are opening the market on June 13th, and we will operate every Tuesday and Friday from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. So make sure you come and shop local with us. Rich, this girl is on fire. I love it, love it. And again, thanks to the community for stepping up and saying kind words and and making things happen at City Hall for you. A huge thank you goes out to the community. Our voices were heard and we made a difference. And you'll see that play out this year at the Marketplace. Thank you, Mary. Mary Galvanic, our guest. Thanks, Mary, for all you do. Thank you, Rich and Katie. Cadillac (laughs) Unscripted is sponsored by Independent Bank. Join us next week, same time, same station, for more local chat on 1079 CDY.